You're getting one You're shot, getting one shot at this. So get it right. So get it right. Get it right. Hey everybody, it is Giacomo. Good Sunday morning, afternoon, whatever it possibly could be right now. Uh, still recovering from an Uber gig last night, but um, with all that's happening in the world right now, I couldn't let this opportunity to pass us by. With regard to the Amber Geiger and Botham Jean situation in Dallas, my former home for five years, um, I know exactly where this building is located and where that precinct is located and such, where it all happened. I spent a lot of time there driving Uber and all. Um, to encapsulate this video here, number one, it's probably been my last video from my living situation here. I'm working on something that you will all see very soon. And it kind of blends into what I'm going to talk about now and the nature of forgiveness. Um, for us Hebrews and uh, Shalom Aleichem, Yom Kippurim is the more appropriate title the day it's coming up. It's Tuesday night at sundown it begins. More commonly known as Yom Kippur is the day of reckoning, where my Hebrew brothers and myself will be afflicting our souls. As big as I am, I am going to try to do it perfectly this year and not eat or drink anything for 25 hours. Now, mind you, I live about just about an hour away from my synagogue, so trying to drive an hour to get there to um, go and worship and break our fast corporately is going to be a bit of an issue, but I think I can do it. Most notably, there have been a lot of things that I have done to family members, to people who have tried to help me that I have had to reach out to forgiveness for um, this day and in general. Now, for those of you who are Christian or walk from some other kind of pathway to some people would say the common understanding of the divine, you probably think that forgiveness is uh, should happen at all times. And it's so, so do we, in all honesty. If you know anything about the Hebrew community, what we normally do is when we have wronged someone, we go back to that person and we are to pay them back 20% of the laws. You know, it's easy to do when it's financial, when it's a, a slight of the mouth or it's some kind of uh, libel or any kind of wrongdoing. It's a little bit harder to fix it in that way. But um, in this case, because it is Yom Kippur, and if you don't know what Yom Kippur is, I'll encapsulate it for you in this way. Um, it's the day when the Kohen Haggadol, the high priest, goes behind the curtain and approaches the Shekinah, Shekinah or Shekinah, if you want to pronounce it that way, the visible, physical manifestation of Yahweh Elohim, or, sorry for my Jewish brothers, Yahuwah, the one true divine name. Uh, Rabbi Trail, I don't, and you should not, have any problem calling the Almighty by his one true name. Uh, the honorific God is a lie. Um, it's too common for us Hebrew folk, but that's a different story. Um, but with that, every year, the Kohen Haggadol, the high priest, goes behind the curtain and makes amends with Yahweh Elohim, the Shekin Yah, for the sins of Yisrael and for his own sins. Now, the scuttlebutt is that if the high priest's own sins were not reconcilable to Yahweh Elohim, he would be struck dead by going beyond that curtain. And of course, the other rumor was that the other priests who would minister to Yahweh in the temple would tie a rope around the high priest's ankle and he would walk around the, uh, the ark. And if the high priest were to be struck dead by Yahweh Elohim, the bells on his... Um, you hear a ring and sit. Yep, sorry about that. <laughs> the bells you would hear on his uh, on his uniform would stop ringing, and so they would know. Okay, Yahweh struck him dead. Yank him out. Don't go in there. Go get him because Yahweh's angry with us. You know the benefit, of course, is Yeshua Hamashiach, the personage of the invisible Elohim, came and rescued us from a lot of that. Now the Torah is still active. Another rabbi trail here for you, but. 
we don't have to go behind the high curtain and have an individual go and minister to Yahweh and ask for forgiveness for our sins any longer. Nevertheless, it still has to be done. Sin is what? Transgression of the law or transgression of the Torah, but enough of that right now. So there's been a lot talked about with um, uh, Brent Jean going to Amber Geiger, you know the story by now, and telling the judge, can I hug her? And I got to admit as much, and I'm not the most sensitive person in the world, but I do, especially when it comes to my, my dead kitty cat. I still cry over her occasionally. Hang on a second. And so he flat out said, you know what, I forgive you. Now, we all talk about being a boss, being a king, and what's up, being a real near. That is boss level forgiveness, right up to the edge of what Yahushua HaMashiach did for us. He forgave the two sinner, the one sinner that is, with whom he was executed on, on Calvary. We should all have that kind of forgiveness in our hearts, especially if we, those my brothers and sisters who are going to church today, and maybe you kind of murmur out the Lord's Prayer, you know, for we forgive our debts as we forgive those who trespass against us. And you might say it and not understand what you are saying to the Almighty, that we want you to forgive our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us. If you don't believe it, maybe you should stop saying it. That's kind of a harsh thing to say, but Yeshua, Jesus, had a lot of harsh things to say to us. As much as the left and other people who don't know I deny Yahushua, Jesus, would think that he was all sugar and butterflies and love everybody and he made all foods clean. No, he didn't. He had some very harsh words to say to us, like repent, stop sinning, and sin no more. Certainly, and I apologize for the air conditioning coming on, it's still kind of warm here in South Carolina. I want to introduce you to a story that maybe has escaped a lot of people if you don't know at all. I'm going to show you a picture right now. Okay, that is um, the actor Kelsey Grammer. If you're not a big fan or a fan at all, you don't know who he is. He played the long-running character uh, Frasier Crane on the 80s sitcom Cheers and all through the early mid-90s, uh, uh, going into like 2000s, um, in a show called Frasier, the spinoff of Cheers. Now, I bring him up for a reason because at some point his father moved to look it up again, I think it's to uh, St. Lucia or St. Kitts, somewhere, no, in the, somewhere that he was Virgin Islands. Now, for whatever reason, and here's the, the date you should all keep in mind, on April 4th, 1968, that was the day that our greatest black leader ever, Martin Luther King, leading by love and example and forgiveness, was murdered by an assassin's bullet. Now, understandably, it made a lot of black people angry at the time. I get it, I still get it. A man by the name of, look this up here, Arthur Bevan Niles, a black man, a West Indian black man, for whatever reason, decided to take out his frustrations on Kelsey Grammer's father, set his father's uh, car on fire to lure him out of his house, and killed him, shot him dead in the street. And you know what? Kelsey Grammer forgave him. But that was a while back. Here's a new one you didn't hear about, if you didn't hear about the original story. Kelsey Grammer's sister, um, younger sister I believe she was, her name was Karen Grammer, was abducted, raped, and murdered by a black man by the name of Freddie Lee Glenn. Black man. Now this happened back in the uh, early, early 70s. This man is still incarcerated in a state prison against in Colorado. And he had a, uh, a parole hearing recently. And guess who showed up? Mr. Frazier Crane, Mr. Several Movies Under His Belt. Fantastic singing and speaking voice, did a lot of voiceover work on top of that. 
Kelsey Grammer came to this man's parole hearing and you know what he said to him? I forgive you. There's been so much talk about, you know, what would you do if your family member was killed and, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know what? We're not supposed to care about that. Mankind's justice will be meted out the way it's going to be meted out. And whatever justice is going to be meted out from a much higher plane upon which we are standing is going to be meted out at some point and it has nothing to do with you or me or our opinion. It is the word of Almighty Yahweh encapsulated in that book we all call the Bible. So if you know anything about the nature of forgiveness, you know that even Yeshua himself said it 70 times 7. I'm still learning to forgive my father for not being there and I'm watching so many people that are doing better than I am doing now, younger than I am, whose fathers prepared them for success like my father failed to do for me and my sister. But every day I've had to say, you know, Yahweh, I forgive him. And I understand that my dad was not properly equipped from his father to be a father, to be a great and perfect husband to my mother, leading to their separation. There are many people in my life that I've had to forgive, a lot of Marines. They are people that I'll probably never see again, this side of, of Shamaim. There are people that I went to high school and college with, my running partners, that when my 40th reunion comes up in just a few years now, yes, I'm that old, I don't want to see these two people. And we were real close, even after I finished high school and started college and came back from Operation Desert Storm. But I have to forgive them. I probably will never speak to them again in life. If I see them at the reunion, I'm gonna to have to say, hey bro, well listen, I don't know what you guys have been doing since 1992 when I finished college. Haven't bothered to reach out to me. I reached out to you a couple times, but hey, I forgive you. We're done here. There are people in California I've had to forgive during my 20 years up in California. And given the nature of the entertainment business, I've met people that I've seen working on Double Dragon. And this is like maybe two years ago. I'm like, dude, you were in Double Dragon? Yeah, so was I. Not that I had anything against that person, but this business is very small. And whatever injury that person perpetuated upon me, including my Me Too story, and I'll tell you about it at some point if you like, I've had to say, I forgive them. I'm gonna cut this video here. It, um, it like a friend of mine needs prayer right now. But anyway, take the moment in your life to get up off your own BS and forgive at least one person today. And start 70 times seven. If you have to do the actual number, or it is just every time the adversary curses be upon you. Every time the adversary tells you not to forgive someone, you go ahead and you do it anyway and say, hey, Yahweh, I may never see this person again in my life, but I forgive them right now and please forgive my sins. And is anybody watching this video right now that you have something against me? It's Yom Kippur. I apologize. Whatever I've done to you, please forgive me. Anyway, I love you. Shalom Aleichem. And uh, Chag Sameach, Yom Kippurim.